Okay, so uh, I'll just get started. This is design at York St. John University. So that's the team uh, over at York Minster during the graduation ceremonies. So uh, here's really just a list of the, the staff, which I won't go into in too much detail other than you uh, f will be looking at for graphic design, John Temperton, Warren Fernan, Andrew Byram, who I will be uh, talking about in more detail in a moment. Uh, and I'll be taking you through games design and Rich is here to take you through animation. So we'll give you all the details we can. We've got some amazing support staff, so we'll talk you through uh, some of those as well. Uh, but those are really there to help you with the more technical side of the software and hardware um, and are hugely supportive. So let's. So here's a little uh, overview of the course. So obviously we're just looking at games design, graphics and uh, also animation but it's just it's good to bear in mind the fact that we are part of a design suite so consequently you have access to uh, the facilities on these other courses um, which is useful for collaborations e.g. product design wanting to use the VR kit for 3D visualizations uh, and so we also have postgraduates which just started last year which are very successful which um, we have uh, MA visual communication and MA visual virtual visual virtual and augmented reality which um, which I'm running with Warren which uh, utilizes a lot of uh, the latest hardware so I'll talk about that a little bit more towards the end of the present Okay, so this is the NSS, so this is 2019, so we've just got uh, 2023, so it's pretty much um, exactly the same. So uh, design-wise, we've got 90% overall satisfaction, um, and uh, that's overall satisfaction for the courses. So that says the full design department, so we're doing pretty well. The actual university has an 86% overall satisfaction, um, which is fantastic from an NSS perspective and that's kind of placing us at 27th out of 122 universities so we're doing very well with regards um, overall satisfaction and we're very proud of that and we work hard to sustain that so let's move so just to, obviously you're not on campus um, this map is obviously used when you are on campus but just to kind of point out if you um, I'm just gonna, this is with regards to the next slide so we're up at the design center up here um, this is one of the entrances you can come into the campus um, but this has been effectively cleared this was a, a green space um, that we now are developing a new uh, centre, which basically is a massive new development, uh, a huge boon, boon for the university. Um, and this uh, should be complete in mid-2021 and we'll be uh, utilising all the facilities uh, inside of this new build um, and give a lot more space and opportunities for our students. So it's going to be a go-to destination uh, for York, really. So this is something fantastic for us right in the core of the city. So let's move on to graphic design. So uh, so let's just have a look here. We've got Warren on the left here, John in the middle, and Andrew Byram up in the top right. So Warren uh, basically uh, has a... Um, he's basically worked for Alias Wavefront. He's, he's spent a long time at the BBC. He's won numerous awards at the BBC. Uh, and now he's in charge of our master's program. Um, and he's hugely experienced across education and also in 3D software and visualizations, as well as design. So uh, next we've got John, who's um, basically currently doing a, a PhD in creativity and education. Uh, he's been teaching uh, for a long time. Uh, also had a long, uh, well, a, a, a relatively long career in games. Um, not in comparison to such an old dinosaur as myself, but uh, he so he's had quite a successful career in games and also uh, an expert in graphic design and has uh, published papers in this area. And over to Andrew Byram, who um, basically is also an expert in the field of graphic design. He's done a few TED Talks um, and he is basically uh, done a few TED Talks about uh, typography and type ex experimentation. So you're in good hands there. So let's just move on. 
Uh, so, so we... with a quick overview of uh, graphic design, so this is quite similar. It's a similar structure to most of our courses, you know, games design animation. So in the first year, we're kind of giving you the fundamentals, um, and you also have a specialist project and also a research project, which is the academic uh, content or aspect of this module or this year. Uh, in which case you will actually be writing and researching uh, an academic area linked to the subject uh, which you are interested in and delivering a, a um, dissertation or thesis uh, in that area in your first year to kind of get you used to the academic um, academic thinking really. So year two, you've got your specialist project um, collaborative. So you can there's a number of collaborative briefs available where you can collaborate with other design disciplines such as interiors, such as graphics. UR graphics such as games or animation. Um, so, you know, we, there's some interesting projects come out of these. Uh, certainly, we had one between games and graphics in the last uh, couple of years. It was quite interesting where it was branding um, a online multiplayer game with logos from a particular uh, drinks brand. So that was quite interesting. Um, you obviously also get live at industry briefs. So, you know, you'll have uh, you'll have experience of actual briefs set by local industries. You know, we have a lot of big companies uh, within York who set briefs for the graphic designers. Uh, and then your professional portfolio, which is very much to do with organising your materials for um, starting to prepare organising your portfolio to get yourself a job. Um, and then year three is uh, your major project and which really is a project you choose yourself, um, which you'll pursue for the year, which will highlight your specialization and your learning over the last two years. And then you've got your um, your client project, uh, which really is another uh, aspect of being set by an external client or a professional body or organization. And usually we, we kind of tend to um, help the students to find find a local business or a local organization that they can have regular iterations and feedback from because obviously that's the the point of it is that um that then you are getting real industry feedback okay so uh, so just have a look at some of the spaces so you know we regularly uh we regularly get in professionals to come in and kind of uh, give talks and to also give feedback as this is obviously vital, it's very it's very important for us to keep constant um, close associations with industry and keep up to date with industry, and that's why we bring in professionals to kind of help the students iterate on the design processes. Uh, so, also just to point out, you know that. We are not only digital based, but we do have a print room, as you can see there, top left. Um, and so we actually do have printing presses and we do have the uh, the practical and mechanical uh, hardware to um, utilize as well as the digital processes, which obviously we're up to date with all, all of those as well. But, you know, this is uh, also we have tech experts in the uh, in these fields. So regardless of which area you, you want to kind of uh, specialize in you are going to have experts to help you learn the tools of your trade um, and so here we are again with uh, trips where basically we are getting feedback from industry professionals uh, and this as I say is a hugely important aspect of the course uh, so this is really to do with some of our UK based trips. So this is some trips down to London, the design museums. Um, so this happened uh, a couple of years ago. Obviously, there's going to be some slight alterations to this with the current pandemic situation. Uh, but we are aiming to get some UK trips, uh, certainly, you know, from the start from the beginning of next year, we're hoping to kind of start getting those moving again. Um, so here's a trip to uh, a paper factory, uh, if I can, it's the GF Smith paper manufacturer for the graphic design students, who, uh, so basically learning the processes and all the necessary um, knowledge of your trade really, um, so you were keeping, up to the, keeping you up to date with the industry processes. So uh, if I can just get rid of my notes there. Thanks. Uh, and here's one of our international trips that happened a couple of years ago out to Porto. So we also had some last year, the graphic design students went out to New York. Uh, so there's a supplement, a small supplementary fee for some of the international trips. Um, so obviously we will be looking carefully at these uh, for the following academic year, whether or not these are still something we can do. But we certainly hope so because the students love it. Uh, and here they all are loving it. So. So graphics regularly win uh, 
a lot of awards. So this is the we've uh, won the Penguin Book Prize, uh, DNA D Awards, uh, the YCN Award. I believe that it's just hidden behind my video there. Um, so uh, exhibition round Secret Seven. Um, so you know there's a lot of big prizes, big international awards that we win uh, here at York St John for the graphic design course. So well done. Uh, again, I'm just going to close my notes. Go away. So here's just some examples of some of the portfolios uh, of the winning submissions and, and certainly uh, some of the uh, kind of work that the craft design students are producing, which is excellent. Uh, and so just quickly kind of segging over to game design, which is obviously my area. So, so this is some of the awards we've recently won for game design. So we've got quite a small game design course, which is one of our strengths, as, as, I, as I talk about in a bit. Um, but we just want to cover the DNA D award. Um, I said we, one of the students, obviously, Ned. Um, so that's an international award. Um, so that's a fantastic prize that uh, Ned's won there for his game Melody, which is to do with kind of um, learning a new uh, musical language uh, to converse with other players in the multiplayer world. So that was awarded by Ray. Um, the, the famous games company, um, Sea of Thieves. Um, so, uh, and look, there's a picture of the wood pencil hidden behind my head. Uh, so again, we've just recently won uh, Simo Digital Best Game Design uh, Category Award uh, in the Game Republic Awards. And this is for a, a VR game called Stoof. Uh, where you're hunting the golden meatball um, by flinging uh, pieces of furniture around a large sh furniture showroom um, that looks a little bit like a well-known brand I shall not mention. Okay, so I'm just going to uh, move over to games now, so I'll just switch to my other video. I'm going to quickly talk you through the BA Honours in Games Design over here at York St John University. So uh, if you come to one of the open days, you'll probably have met me. My name is Andy Sandem. I'm the subject leader in game design. Uh, so I've spent 11 years lecturing at award-winning universities in game design. Um, prior to that, I spent about 20 years in the game industry uh, as a concept artist, script writer, but primarily as a level designer. Uh, and kind of started that uh, focus on the original Tomb Raider series of games when I was a uh, level designer, a script writer and artist. So that's kind of where the focus of the course lies. It's to do with design. It's not really an art course. Just wanted to get that up front. OK, so with that in mind, we've also my colleague uh, the, is also a experienced developer. Uh, Andy Gibson, he's more of an indie developer, so he's still producing games. He shipped one last year, uh, which is now on the uh, PlayStation Store, Beep Beep Deliveries. So Andy kind of focuses more on Unity and uh, indie game development. I'm kind of a bit more um, single to AAA with regards, uh, I'm utilizing Unreal and he's utilizing Unity. Okay, so, um, Structure very quickly. So in the first year, you're kind of getting uh, introduction to the game design fundamentals, software and techniques. Year two, you uh, get to collaborate with um, animators and sort of focus more on your own specialisms. You get live industry briefs from industry partners uh, and a possible work placement, uh, which you can secure uh, for a, a period um, during your second year. In industry, obviously. So year three, you get to focus for the entire year on either a learn or a team project, but it's going to be a published playable game. This is what we stress all the way through this course. You need to make things playable. This is for your own portfolio. This is so you'll get a job. This is the only way you're going to get a job in games is if you've got something playable. OK, uh, with regards to collaborative project, this uh, if you look top, top left, top left, uh, that's the animation studio. So um, this is a collaborative project between games and animators last year. It's a VR project uh, where you're a poltergeist attempting to uh, disrupt a player, which you can see in the top right. So this is a VR project. You potter about in VR and fling things at the actors. Amusing. Um, okay, hardware-wise, 
so we've got a load of VR and AR hardware. We've got a Magic Leaps. We've got a load of Vives. We've got HoloLens. We've got Oculuses. We've got Oculus Goes. Uh, we've got some Rovers, which is a treadmill for the VR kit, which a student is using to develop a project at the moment. We use the VR kit for uh, motion capture, so for cutscenes, etc. We've got massive uh, PCs. Um, uh, in dedicated spaces, uh, we've got a lot of games consoles lying around for after hours games, um, which nobody seems to actually play at the minute, strangely. But uh, we do, uh, probably because they're working so hard, but we do stress that um, students should be playing games out of hours, obviously, because that's uh, you need to learn your trade. Uh, we've also got a Sony dev kit. So you can publish directly up onto uh, the PlayStation Network, uh, although obviously with certain criteria. Uh, and we have, uh, if you're unavailable to work at the university, we also give you access to high-end laptops. Okay, so um, we uh, the software we're using is the Unreal Engine. We also use um, we use Autodesk Maya, although I should say we are con contemplating also introducing Blender because uh, it's becoming quite common in industry. We use Photoshop uh, from Adobe Creative Cloud, uh, sometimes Illustrator, and uh, as I say, kind of we're focusing between Unreal and Unity, uh, so we kind of we focus on 2D, 3D, depending on the package or what the student wants to do, but we have access to uh, all of these engines. Okay. So from uh, the perspective of the course, what we're really looking to do is train you as a designer. This is the core focus of the course. It's quite unique in that way, but that's what we're good at and that's what we do. So um, level design, UI design, UX design, AI and mechanics. We currently aren't stressing too much on UI and UX design, but certainly game mechanics and level design are a core parts of the course. And that's where you'll get your jobs. Um, visual scripting, we're teaching in Unreal, blueprints. Uh, so we're also looking at the production as in producers and assistant producers. And the Gibson, as I say, looks uh, at freelance and indie. So um, he's taken the second years uh, through that process at the minute and they're creating some interesting little games. We look at 2D art in the first year. We look at 3D art. We can support you in those areas, but it's not an art course. Uh, and we do stress that. OK, so. Um, as I say, we're focusing entirely on game logic, so we move through from the basic game components, you know, objective, challenge, reward, uh, teaching the player, me game mechanics, challenges, uh, through to kind of in your third year, you're moving on to looking at very detailed game design documents. This is from a, a kind of masterclass from Guerrilla Games. Um, uh, so Horizon Zero Dawn, um, so this is actually kill zone, but they're talking through different collision techniques and how to waypoint the map. We've got a lot of industry links, so we've got um, through Game Republic, we're a member of Game Republic, so we have uh, some quite close partners. We've got uh, Revolution Software, it's just around the corner, so they pop in occasionally. We've got Team 17 down the road, so we do a lot of play testing for them, so it's good contacts for the students. Uh, we recently had a visit from um, Pete Conley, who uh, was the lead audio designer on the original Watch Dogs. He was also, I know him from Tomb Raider. Um, so he popped up to talk about sound design, a very uh, un under, uh, overlooked area of game development. So uh, just had a boot camp from Stuart, who's also an ex-Tomb Raider. Um, so he had some hit games on the Apple Store. He's uh, Mr. Onions up there, top left, came in and talked us through kind of creating games for the uh, mobile device. Uh, just a couple of weeks ago, we had Steven, who uh, was previously the producer on Crackdown 3. Um, and he was talking us through a number of techniques. So what happens here is you see we get a lot of these uh, special lectures and I record them and these are only accessible to our students because of various NDA uh, elements of them um, that we we also had my ex-colleague Bob in who is one of the uh, designers, senior designers on Gears of War. So he just shipped Gears of War and, and talked to us about that. Heather popped in. She was one of the original uh, team members of the original Tomb Raider team. Um, so I worked on Tomb Raider 2 through 5. Heather was uh, on the first Raider and she dug out loads of interest in the old sketches and, and elements uh, that she found in the attic and talked us through those. And so I've got that's accessible to the students. Uh, trips. We've got interesting trips. So we just recently came back from Berlin. I took the students over there. 
Um, so uh, we did a lot of game museums as well as a lot of cultural uh, museums so that uh, the students kind of got a, a broader view and was inspired in a lot of ways to create new uh, games. Okay, uh, and also we have dedicated showcase events. We take, uh, we we have um, a showcase run through the Game Republic, where which involves sumo, it involves Rockstar, uh, and other smaller elements such as game jams, and we've got our own uh, arcade cabinet where we let the students put uh, their games on. Graduation, as I'm sure you know, takes place in York Minster, so that's quite spectacular. And we also have a uh, great uh, graduation show with a, a large space, which you can see top right there, which attracts a lot of interest. Uh, so our USP really is to, to keep a small cohort that we teach uh, very intensely. So there's not the classes are not large, and that is very important to us because we want to focus very specifically on making the best students the best design students um, and what we want to get for you is a industry ready portfolio so that is vitally important we get you something playable in a portfolio that you can then basically uh, take out into industry where people can play your game and then you get a job okay so if you've got any questions do not hesitate to email me on that email address um, but uh, or on the Twitter, uh, but please get in contact if you've got any questions. Uh, otherwise, uh, I hope to see you soon. Thank you. Bye bye. Hello. Uh, so I'm just going to talk you through the uh, cost structure and tell you a little bit more about the uh, BA animation degree at York St John University. Um, so just to give you a bit more uh, background about who I am, uh, my name is Richard Jacobs. Uh, and I'm a lecturer in animation uh, in design at York St John. Um, so I spent about 10 years running an independent uh, animation studio, um, mostly creating content for the museums and heritage sector, um, and also creating uh, independent animation, uh, so short narrative films which have been um, screened at festivals uh, internationally. So the kind of core focus of the animation programme is um, to prepare you for um, industry practice uh, and our programmes uh, across the whole of design are um, delivered by professional practitioners so we all have um, some industry uh, and professional experience. Uh, that also goes for uh, not only just for the academic staff but also our technical specialists as well so we have um, technical specialists in both uh, animation uh, and game design uh, and they uh, focus on the kind of core uh, software and uh, kind of tech delivery on the program so they have a supportive role but also a teaching role as well uh, who work alongside uh, the kind of uh, core academic delivery as well we also invite, invite a number of uh, visiting um, lecturers and guest speakers into um, from industry which I'll, I'll talk about uh, in a little while yeah, so just right at the top, the, the, the animation degree sort of gives you the opportunity to uh, develop your own animation skills. Um, we explore a wide range of animation techniques. We aren't technique specific, so you will have the opportunity uh, to explore 2D animation, uh, both digital, paperless and paper-based traditional animation, um, 3D animation using Autodesk Maya uh, and stop motion animation as well. So why animation? Why study animation at all? Um, well, some recent research by uh, Nesta um, revealed that of all the digital skills that you really will need in the next 10 years, uh, animation will be the most in demand. Um, so animation covers a broad range uh, of uh, kind of specialisms across a broad range of industries from uh, broadcast to film, to the games industries, to the commercial sector as well. So animation is a really important in-demand um, skill and it only seems at the moment that that's really growing uh, from strength to strength. So uh, we do have a, uh, a YouTube channel at this point. I would uh, typically show you uh, some examples of showreels of our student work, um, but we're going to set, we'll post a link at the end of this uh, discussion today uh, where you can access uh, the animation, most recent animation reel um, and see some of our animation and games uh, collaborative work as well. So um, yeah, please do at the end of this presentation, take, spend some time having a look at our student work and, and seeing uh, the, kind of, the kind of work that our students make. So just to give you a kind of core um, 
introduction to how the, the course is, is structured. In the first year, um, students really get the opportunity to e uh, explore a wide range of animation techniques. So there are projects that are focused in 2D animation, stop motion and 3D to kind of build that really core um, understanding uh, and knowledge of animation uh, from its very basics. So it's all about kind of fundamentals of animation, those kind of animation principles that cover uh, all animation techniques. And, and then you have the opportunity to explore a variety of animation techniques before in your second year deciding uh, kind of an area of, of specialism. There's also projects uh, in the first year that include the core fundamentals of character design uh, and environment design as well and understanding uh, animation pipelines and how animation actually gets made. So what processes um, need to be undertaken uh, and how do animators fit into production pipelines across a variety of different industries as well. So really understanding the, the kind of core mechanics of how the animation industry works alongside learning the kind of uh, core fundamentals of, of animation practice itself. From the second year, um, there's much more specialist projects. Uh, we're not technique specific, as I said, from the second year onwards. So you can you can choose which animation techniques you want to use and undertake. So those who are interested in animation from the games industries can start to specialise in that area. Those who are interested in sort of traditional frame by frame animation can undertake projects in um, in that kind of field. Uh, most projects are uh, independent in second and third year, so students can make their own piece of work. Uh, using techniques that they like. There is, however, a, a collaborative project in second year as well. That's semester two of second year where animators will collaborate with game designers to create um, a piece of work. Then that could be a broad range of things from a playable level to a 2D kind of platformer or uh, even a VR experience. So there's, there's a really broad opportunity to collaborate, collaborate with game designers. But for the most part, uh, animation projects are independent and you do get to choose which animation technique you use uh, from that second year. There's also the opportunity to undertake some degree of industry experience in second year as well, and that could be from um, kind of one-to-one -one portfolio reviews um, with industry bodies to uh, guest speakers, which I'll come to. Um, but also we will help uh, use our industry connections to, to facilitate uh, kind of studio experience and, and short work placements as well, if, if that's of interest. In the third year, um, really the, the thing that kind of covers the whole year is the major project uh, and that's really up to you what you make so you have a year to make whatever you like and that could be a, a short narrative piece for the film festival circuit that could be a playable game level as i've said before uh, that could be a music video wh whatever you like really you get a, an entire year to make that kind of showcase piece that you can then take out into industry after finishing your, your degree uh, to kind of start a network um, at festivals um, or just to take direct to studios and kind of show off your work. So what are some of the tools that we use in uh, on the animation program? So in terms of uh, software, we mostly work with Autodesk Maya, uh, rendered with the uh, Redshift renderer, it's a third party renderer. Um, we use Toon Boom Harmony uh, and Dragon Frame and the Adobe Suite in terms of our sort of core tools. Uh, we also explore a little bit of Unity and Unreal Games engines as well. So the reason we use these tools is because these are the tools that are being used by professional studios, um, animators uh, on industry projects at the moment. And, and these are the kind of roles that are in demand. So if you take Tubeam Harmony, for example, there are, is a, an awful lot of demand for uh, Harmony animators, uh, both nationally and internationally at the moment. So it's a really important skill to have and we make sure that we are reflecting industry practice in, in the tools that we use uh, on the programme. And to accompany that, the kind of hardware we use, uh, we have dedicated VR development suites across VR, uh, across animation and games design. Um, students exploring uh, design or 2D digital animation uh, can use Cintiq 16 uh, HD tablets. We have high spec PCs in our dedicated specialist spaces. Uh, they can handle any, any of our uh, software packages. We have an industry standard stop motion studio, um, again, using um, sort of professional DSLRs, lighting, lenses, everything that you would expect to see in, in a stop motion studio. Uh, we also have traditional animation facilities, including light boxes, um, cell animation for cell painting and really traditional animation, um, and access to a uh, 
kind of the, the maker workshops in design centers. So using 3D printing, laser cutting, uh, sil silicon casting, and sort of broader model making facilities are all available uh, for those that want to explore that, that area of animation. Uh, as I've just previously mentioned, we do have dedicated specialist spaces. So uh, we have an animation studio, which has all of the tools uh, and facilities that animators need. Uh, they can come in and work uh, and have access to, to everything they need. And there's a real community feel about the, the animation um, studios. Uh, and there's a really strong culture of kind of support and sharing across students as well, because students are working in a broad range of techniques. So uh, there's a kind of a mutual, a mutual uh, sort of respect for what other people are doing and everyone's really interested in, in uh, everyone else's projects. So there's, there's a really a kind of inclusive, friendly atmosphere in the animation studios, um, which we really like. So we're really pleased by that. Um, yeah, but all, all the animation facilities are kind of all, all in that one contained space. So um, students get a sense of, of ownership over their own environments. So thinking about some of the industry roles that you might want to move into after studying the animation degree, um, you may choose to be an animation specialist. So working in a much larger studio, but specialising in one small area of animation. For example, uh, 2D visual effects would be a, a, a really kind of niche specialism. Um, or you may be more interested in, in becoming more of an animation generalist. So someone who works in smaller studios uh, has a much more broad and flexible skill set um, working as a kind of a, a generalist or uh, working on smaller independent productions. Um, we deliver a series of lectures in, in pre-production, pre-visualisation, storyboarding, layout animation as well. So if you're interested in all the pre-production side of animation, so character design, environment design, turnarounds, model sheets, that's an option for you. Uh, and on the other side of the production pipeline, there's post-production as well. So compositing, editing, lighting, everything to kind of refine and polish up animation material before delivery. There is the option to explore 2D and 3D rigging as well, a really important part of the animation industry these days. Um, a rigger is a job within itself, um, and that's something that could be explored within the animation degree. And for those who are, feel more hands-on and practical, there's the opportunity to explore stop motion, model making, 3D printing, silica casting, as I mentioned before. Um, and you really could specialise uh, and tailor your portfolio towards a broad range of, of different industries. Um, so in, in terms of uh, kind of more outward facing events, students uh, are given the opportunity to attend the Aesthetica Short Film Festival every year where students can go and uh, watch a broad range of um, animated films uh, from the festival. And there's also, we, we co-host the, the festival with, um, with Aesthetica, so York and John um, lend some of his spaces to the festival to, for, to invite people in to come and deliver uh, industry specialist talks. So at the last Aesthetica Festival, um, Ardman um, came to deliver a, a masterclass and so did Blue Zoo Animation as well. Uh, and they invite these in industry uh, studios and professionals in every year to deliver these talks as part of the festival. And also it's an opportunity to explore kind of emerging trends um, and themes uh, and techniques within animation by watching um, the animated shorts. We're keen to take uh, animators out of the studio. Um, animation is all about studying the real world in some way. So we take students out on trips. So for example, as part of the second year movement in nature project, we take students uh, to a wildlife park for a day of kind of drawing and study uh, to really think about how uh, biomechanics works. So it's really important um, that students understand that animation is basically the art of studying and interpretation, interpreting the real world. So we take students out of the classroom to, to undertake projects uh, on these, these day trips. Throughout semester time, um, we run life drawing classes every week. This is not part of um, the core modules. So this isn't a core part of learning, it's not uh, compulsory, but students do have the opportunity to attend life drawing um, every week alongside illustration, game design, uh, to fine art students as well, to really kind of build up that core uh, drawing skill. So we have students from a really broad range of um, drawing ability, um, so we don't necessarily expect that students have a really uh, strong drawing skill, but we do encourage students to um, develop their craft by attending life drawing. And it is remarkable how quickly students can improve their, their drawing craft and, and draftsmanship by attending these, these life drawing sessions um, every week through semester time. Uh, as I said, uh, the, the staff that teach on the programme, uh, including myself, uh, are from industry, and we have really strong links 
industry links um, with studios both locally and uh, more nationally as well. So these are some examples of the studios that we've uh, collaborated, collaborated with, students have um, uh, worked with, uh, and we've invited uh, these studios in to deliver talks and masterclasses as well. So we have really strong links to, to a wide range of um, industry groups. So yeah, just thinking about the industry talks and masterclasses, as I said, we do invite uh, professionals from animation studios to come in to, to deliver talks, but also um, professionals from uh, other fields. So we uh, every year we, as part of an animated performance project, we invite a professional voice actor to come in uh, and spend a day working with students, recording some uh, some dialogue that they can then use for their animated projects. Um, that's a really great day. Students always love it, uh, and they they get some experience of working with industry professionals um, not just animators but um, other professionals that they may work with in their professional life such as uh, voice actors so as an example of um, an industry talk that we had um, this year just gone we invited claire hernan from lupus films to come in to talk about um, their most recent production of the tiger who came to tea um, their studio has made uh, projects like uh, Going on a Bear Hunt and the uh, Snowman films. Um, so they, uh, so Claire came in to deliver a talk, but also there's time afterwards for uh, portfolio reviews as well. So to spend some time individually with students uh, to look through their work and to give guidance on their uh, portfolio as well. So really, really invaluable experiences for students. And um, we also invite uh, industry um, professionals to come in and look at students end of uh, third year work as well so their major projects so this year we invited Kath Shackleton from Vettel Animation uh, to come in and offer some um, individual feedback on students third year major projects but also to choose um, the design industry award for the animation program as well. We also is issue throughout the course uh, a series of live client briefs so um, we actually bring in briefs so students undertake uh, animation projects from uh, real world clients uh, and examples of clients that students have worked with before uh, the Ovid Group, uh, Yorkshire Wildlife Park, uh, the Leeds International Film Festival as well so these briefs come in and students can undertake these uh, live briefs as part of their module work so even from second year and third year they already will have uh, experience of working with clients and pieces of work which are being kind of uh, shipped out to the wider world as well. Um, our animators are um, kind of guided to um, create and develop an international skill set. So not only will these animation skills be applicable uh, nationally, but also internationally as well. So to give you a couple of examples, our students have collaborated um, on projects such as uh, some animation tests for the Tea Dragon Society um, graphic novels, um, which is from uh, Katie O'Neill, who's a New Zealand based and graphic novelist and uh, we've had students work on the um, Hell of a Boss series which is currently in production in uh, LA. So these animation skills can be taken globally uh, and they are globally significant uh, skill sets uh, for the animation sector. We also uh, encourage students to take part in, in competitions as well so a recent example is um, at the end of last year students uh, took part in the Cardiff Animation Quick Draw. So all the students across all three years collaborated and they had to make an animated film within 48 hours, which is a great experience. It was lots of fun. It was absolute chaos, um, but it was really great. And the, the project that they came out with was brilliant and it was screened uh, as part of the Cardiff Animation Festival as well. So really all these um, projects, talks, uh, industry kind of liaison, all build towards creating a portfolio of work that you can take out into the industry after your degree to go and get work. So our students are always focused towards creating that showreel, that showpiece, showcase piece of work, that portfolio that really will be able to kind of show off their, their knowledge, understanding and skill set um, to the world of work beyond their, their degree. Um, so we kind of uh, prove that by having students put, apply their final year works um, to the uh, Royal Television Society Student Awards and that's something that we um, offer to students that we will um, put their work into the, the RTS Student Awards at the end of their, their degree. 
So really, we're, as I said, we're, we're focused on students and making a piece of work that's that's ready for, for the industry beyond uh, the degree. So yeah, that's animation uh, in a nutshell. Um, I look forward to answering any questions you might have uh, later on. Please take a look at the animation work. Uh, the link will be added at the end of this entire presentation. And thank you for your time. So thanks, Rich. That's cool. So what I'll do now is I'm just going to move over and quickly uh, kind of finish up by talking about the master's uh, program. So this is a great transition um, further learning from your uh, from your BA ONS through to your um, your Bachelor of Arts through to your Masters. So we've got quite a few students who are coming through from games into the virtual and augmented reality. So, um, you know, it's a really nice uh, opportunity just to finish up your learning with a Masters, which gives you a lot of benefits and access to um, international jobs uh, and, you know, gives you, opens a lot of doors. Uh, and really the situation is that you can continue projects from your, uh, from your, bachelor's through to your master's as some of the students are doing um, but also you know you have access to a huge amount of hardware uh, we've got a lot of oculus um, quests that we kind of uh, will be learning out to the students and we have the Vibe Pro and the Vibe Pro Eye, so you can, uh, this research based projects where it's monitoring eye movement, eye tracking, uh, also um, We've got ecological projects that are coming through this year that are garnering a lot of international attention. Um, so, you know, uh, with regards to visual communication, that's more to do with your graphics and your uh, your product design. Um, so I would suggest certainly something that you can think about with regards um, kind of really wrapping up your educational journey and giving yourself uh, a huge amount of opportunities um, within this space of time you have for kind of learning before you go out into the open world so it's kind of uh, it's intertwining between the the bachelor of arts and the masters and so this uh, this has become looking very successful for so uh, we have a study abroad which is available to second year so you can you can uh, leave for uh, one semester or two semesters so I think you're going to need to talk to some of the uh, admin staff who will be available directly after this presentation if you want more specifics on that I do know that games design has access to Keene State College uh, where you will be doing a similar course but in the USA and so I've, as I've mentioned previously, you graduate uh, in York Minster, so that's going to be happening, uh, current graduates, that'll be happening in February now. We've obviously moved it back because of the uh, the current situation. Uh, so that's, you know, an amazing place to, to graduate in and a life uh, a lifetime memory, uh, which will be recorded uh, and televised. OK, so uh, really, uh, you've got previously got my email address if you need to contact me. Um, if you want to look at any of the winning uh, videos uh, or projects, we've just set up the um, games and animation channel on YouTube if you want to follow that link there um, and obviously follow us on Twitter but uh, I'll be here me and Rich will be here uh, directly after the uh, this presentation so for any questions so please feel free to send them on over okay goodbye